Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United players want Mauricio Potticino as their next manager. Ralph Rangnick prefers Eric Ten Hag. Now, Potticino has already told his friends he will be leaving PSG in the summer. The other week, reports in France said Potticino could be sacked by March. And Potticino's job hinges on PSG getting to the next round of the Champions League. PSG play Real Madrid in the last 16 of the Champions League. Reports said not so long ago that Manchester United consider swapping Cristiano Ronaldo for PSG boss Mauricio Potticino. PSG are trying to get Zidane to replace Potticino. Potticino's contract at PSG expires next year. He's been PSG manager for over a year. I think he's won a French Cup with them. Revert back to when Manchester United sacked Jose Mourinho. Manchester United should have got Potticino. But the club decided to go with Solskjaer instead. He's a good manager, Potticino, even though he's hardly won anything. Um, he's proven in the Premier League, which is beneficial. Before, Potticino endured a five-and-a-half-year managerial tenure at Tottenham. Analysing the vast majority of his managerial tenure at Tottenham, Tottenham were competing in and out of the top four. But revert back to 2018, he got Tottenham to their first-ever Champions League final. And at one point, he almost won the league when he was Tottenham manager. I think Tottenham made a bad mistake sacking him uh, before Tottenham managed Southampton. Um, he got Southampton to their highest ever finish in the Premier League. And he only endured a short managerial tenure with Southampton. So they're the clubs he's managed in the Premier League so far. And a long time ago, Potticino managed Espanyol. I reckon Potticino would be the right manager for Man United. You know, maybe some Man United fans will disagree with me. But I think if Potticino came in, he'd suit the strappings of the club and he would get the best out of these group of players. Now, as you all know, Eric Ten Hag is still under consideration. Not so long ago, like I updated you, a Dutch reporter claimed that Eric Ten Hag will leave Ajax at the end of the season following the departure of Mark Overmars. Obviously, Eric Ten Hag was upset with Mark Overmars leaving. There's a lot of Manchester United fans that would like to see Eric Ten Hag get recommended in. I think if Eric Ten Hag came to manage in the Premier League, he'd replicate what he's done at Ajax because you've got to admire the work he's done at Ajax. He's developed the young players well. He's won a couple of titles with them. Revert back to 2019, he got Ajax to the Champions League semi-finals. So there you go. His contract at Ajax expires next year. He's been Ajax manager for over four years now. He got appointed in as the Ajax manager back in 2017. Ajax is the fourth club he's managing in his managerial career. Before Ajax, he managed Utrecht. Before then, managed by Munich's reserves. And before then, managed go-ahead Eagles. 
You know, Manchester United are looking for the fifth permanent manager since Ferguson. You know, four permanent managers have been sacked. We sacked David Moyes, Louis van Gaal, Jose Mourinho and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer got sacked last year. Uh, Ralph Rangnick is Manchester United's interim manager. He's been Manchester United's interim manager for a couple of months now. He is our interim manager until the end of the season. Then it said Rangnick is expected to continue in a consultancy role for a further two years. Manchester United will not offer Rangnick the job on a permanent basis. So far, Rangnick has managed 12 games in all competitions and he's lost two games at the moment. There's been good performances under Rangnick, but on the other side of things there's been poor performances as well. But I've got to make an admission and say he's totally blameless for them poor performances. You know, the players have to take responsibility for their poor performances. Nothing has changed under Rangnick than what we saw under Raleigh. I've got a lot of respect for Rangnick, you know, he's a very good coach and of course he's a German coach. Let me put into the equation as well, none of this squad is Rangnick's, you know, he's inheriting players who other managers have brought in. And I've got to give him credit as well because... He's made changes since he came in because earlier on this season he recommended Ewan Sharpin as an assistant coach and analyst. He also recommended Chris Armisen as an assistant coach and he recommended Saz Chalenzin as a sports psychologist. He's endured one transfer window so far as Man United's interim manager and it was a very disappointing January transfer window because last month Man United didn't make any signings and Man United wanted to sign a midfielder. When Rangnick first came in, he identified Man United's midfield as a weakness. We should have let Lingard and Henderson leave last month, but we didn't. We blocked them from leaving. We had the incident with Mason Greenwood towards the end of last month. Uh, but Man United did loan quite a few players out last month. Uh, not so long ago, it said Rangnick was facing a fresh dressing room with all with his Man United players. Obviously, our players have been unhappy with Rangnick with his treatment of Jesse Lingard. The Lingard situation was the exact same situation as what we had with Martial towards the end of last year, was it? And earlier on this season, it said Rangnick was losing the dressing room and it did mention that 17 Manchester United players were unhappy and wanted to leave. Before Man United, Rangnick was the head of sports and development at Locomotive Moscow. Manchester United's only chance of winning the trophy now this season is the Champions League, but I'm very sceptical we're going to win that. So it's going to be another trophy -less season for Man United. We've not won a trophy since 2017. That's five years ago now. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. We've not won the Premier League since 2013. Now, Manchester United have got good players, but we've also got inconsistent players as well. You know, we've got Dean Henderson. He's a good goalkeeper, but he doesn't get in goal much now because revert back to last summer, De Gea reclaimed that number one spot back. Henderson was in goal for the cup game against Middlesbrough, but that was only his third appearance of the season. Henderson will leave Manchester United in the summer. 
Earlier on this season, he was out with COVID for a while. Uh, revert back towards the end of last season, he got that number one jersey. He did well in a lot of the games he was in goal for last season. He's got that experience behind him, Henderson, because he enjoyed two successful loans with Sheffield. He's had other loan spells before with Stockport, Grimsby and Shrewsbury. And he's under contract with Man United till 2025 as an option of a further year. You know, we got David De Gea, world-class goalkeeper. De Gea has done very well this season. He's now back to his best. De Gea was recently in goal for the game against Burnley at Turf Moor. Didn't really have much to do with him. He made a fantastic save in the second half to deny Woot Weghorst and he made some good punches away. Not so long ago, De Gea got named the Premier League's Player of the Month for January. He became the first goalkeeper to win the award in six years. De Gea has won everything domestically at the football club. This season has been his 11th season at Man United. So reflecting on that, he's been a long servant. He's been with us since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. And earlier on this season, De Gea said he's planning to spend many more years at Manchester United. Revert back to last summer... He reclaimed the number one spot back, as he did at that point decide to cut short his holiday by two weeks. His contract at Manchester United expires next year, and De Gea receives £375,000 a week. So he's the second highest earner at the club behind Ronaldo. He's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. Uh, another goalkeeper we've got is Tom Heaton. He's our third choice goalkeeper. Heaton doesn't get in goal, does he? Um, he's just there as a backup. To Heaton's credit, though, he did well in pre season before the start of this season. Manchester United got Tom Heaton on a free transfer for Maston Villa last summer. I think he signed a two year contract with an option of a third year. Uh, Lee Grant, um, he's still at the club as. Well, I recall Lee Grant making one appearance. I think was that against Astana a few years ago now. Uh, we've got Diego Delo. He's not great overall, but I've got to give him credit. I think Delo's been very impressive under Rangnick. Delo is our first choice right back under Rangnick. And he did quite well against Burnley recently. Do you think Delo will leave Man United in the summer? Well, he has been subjected to transfer speculation before. Last season, Delo had a loan spell with AC Milan, so reflecting on that, he gained some experience. Man United got Delo from Porto a few years ago, paid £19 million for him. His contract at Manchester United expires next year. Aaron Wambasaka. We need to move him on in the summer. He's not good enough to represent the club. Am Wambasaka is no longer our first choice right back. He was our first choice right back under Solskjaer. Um, he's missed uh, the last few games, hasn't he? Um, well, he was out with illness not so long ago. I think Basaka defensively is good, but the attacking side of his game is poor. This season has been his third full season at Man United. Man United got Pesaka from Crystal Palace back in the summer of 2019, got him for £50 million. Uh, we've got quite a few centre halves in the team. You know, we've got Varane now. Varane is a very good centre half. Most of the time when he plays, he seems to make the difference. Uh, Varane was. Good against Burnley recently. Uh, defensively, he was good. 
and unfortunately he had a goal disallowed. But Maguire was the culprit for Varane's disallowed goal because Maguire was in an offside position. Varane also did well against Middlesbrough in the Cup. He played very well against West Ham before the international break. Um, he also played very well in the 3-1 win against Brentford. So he's done well since he come back from that hamstring injury. Varane's endured like two injuries since he signed for the club. Uh, the first injury he got was a groin injury and then the one after that was a hamstring injury. Varane though is regarded as one of the best centre-halves in the world. He's highly experienced and he's got a good pedigree behind him because look at the amount of silverware he won when he was at Real Madrid. Man United signed Varane from Real Madrid last summer for £41 million with add-ons included. He's got a contract with Man United until 2025. There's an option of a further year. Um, obviously we've got Harry Maguire. Harry Maguire, not good enough to represent the club. Like I mentioned yesterday, I think he's probably Manchester United's worst ever signing. Um, a lot of United fans have said that we need to take the captaincy off him. Because quite clearly Maguire is not a leader. <clears throat> like I've just said, uh, Maguire cost us against Burnley because... He was to blame for Varane's disallowed goal and he was also to blame for Burnley's equaliser because Maguire decided to not block Rodriguez for some reason. And Maguire's endured a few injuries as well since he signed for the club. Um, he's had a couple, hasn't he, this season um, and he had ligament damage in his ankle towards the end of last season. Harry Maguire certainly wasn't worth the £80 million that Manchester United paid for him. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment and the second most expensive signing at the club. Uh, Eric Bailly, um, he's a decent centre-half, but Bailly doesn't really get in the team. He lost his place in the team a while ago. And plus he's injury prone as well, which is a concern. He's out with injury at the moment. Not so long ago he was at the African Cup of Nations. The last game he played for Manchester United was the 3-1 win against Burnley, which was the final game of last year. But he came off injured in that one. Uh, Bayer will leave Man United in the summer, I reckon. Um, back in April last year, he signed a contract with Man United until 2024. He's been at the club for over five years. Manchester United got him from Villarreal back in 2016. We paid £30 million. Uh, we have Victor Lindelof. Um, he's not good enough to represent the club. Uh, we need to move him on in the summer. Whether Man United do or not, I don't know. Lindelof has missed the last few games. Uh, is it due to personal reasons? Lindelof's played a lot of games though for Man United, he's played a lot of games alongside Maguire, he's played games alongside Bayern, and he's played some games alongside Varane. Manchester United got Lindelof from Benfica back in 2017, got him for £31 million. Lindelof's under contract with Man United until 2024. Uh, we have Phil Jones. Uh, Phil Jones will leave Man United in the summer. Jones doesn't get in the team much, does he? He did come on in the cup game against Middlesbrough and he started in the game against Wolves at Old Trafford earlier on this season. That's only because Maguire picked up an injury, but Jones was our best player against Wolves at Old Trafford. That was his first Premier League appearance since January 2020. He was out with an knee injury at one point for a while. His contract at Man United expires next year. This season has been his 11th season at Man United, so reflecting on that, he's been a long-serving player. Don't forget, last month, 
on deadline day, Romano said that Jones rejected a loan move to Bordeaux. Man United and Bordeaux had actually reached an agreement for Jones to go out on loan in order to get more playing time. And even reports from France said that Phil Jones' talks were at final stages. But Rangnick said he was happy for him to stay. Uh, Man United have got a couple of left backs. Obviously, we've got Alex Tellez. Now, he's a good left back. He's impressed me under Rangnick. He's our first choice left back under Rangnick. Obviously, he hasn't played the last couple of games, Tellez, because he's got COVID. So obviously Luke Shaw's played the last couple of games with Tellez being out. Uh, Man United got Tellez from Porto back in 2020. Uh, we got him for 15.4 million with add-ons included. The reason we brought him in was to provide competition for Luke Shaw. And uh, Luke Shaw, to his credit, he's done pretty well in his last couple of games. He looks like he's getting back to his best now. Um, he's a good left back overall I think Luke Shaw's enjoyed a lot of poor games this season when he has been fit but I thought Luke Shaw was far superior last season to how he has been so far this season you know this season is what his 8th season at Man United something like that so he has been a long serving player uh, Man United have got quite a lot of midfielders. You know, we've got Paul Pogba. He's a good midfielder. Not only a good midfielder, he's an imperative midfielder as well. Pogba recently played against Burnley. He put a good performance out. He scored Manchester United's goal. That was his first goal of the season and it was also his first Premier League appearance since October because don't forget Pogba was out with injury for a while. He's enjoyed a few injuries since he re-signed for the club so you can say he's injury prone. Pogba also played in the cup game against Middlesbrough and he did well in that one. Don't forget he won the penalty in normal time in that game. Uh, it's very likely Pogba will leave Man United in the summer while he's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Uh, a few weeks ago, though, like I've already mentioned, it said Pogba is willing to stay at Man United as long as Ralph Rangnick is the manager for next season because Pogba has been impressed by Ralph Rangnick since his arrival and it said Pogba would be open to signing a new contract. This season has been his sixth season at Man United since he re-signed. He's won three trophies at the club so far. He's played over 200 games since he re-signed. And Man United paid £89 million for Popper. So reflecting on that is our most expensive signing at the moment. Uh, we do have Scott McTominay. He's not good enough. But he has had good games under Rangnick. And I did say at one point that he was one of our best performers. Performers, sorry, under Rangnick. But in the last few games, um, McTominay hasn't been that good. I don't think he was too good against Burnley recently. Weren't brilliant against Middlesbrough in the Cup either. McTominay, he played well in the game against Brentford because he was involved in the build-up to two of the goals in that one. He played very well in the cup game against Aston Villa. Uh, the only goal that game came from McTominay header. He played well away at Norwich last year and he played well on the opening day against Leeds. McTominay has been part of the club for a long time. Revert back to 2020, he committed his future to the club because he did sign a five-year contract. Uh, Manchester United have also got Fred... Uh, Fred is not good enough to represent the club. Uh, Fred obviously didn't play any part against Burnley because he's out with COVID. 
Uh, Fred has had his good games though this season, but not good enough overall. Uh, Man United got Fred a few years ago from Shakhtar Donetsk, got him for fifty million pounds. Uh, we also have Nemanja Matic. Uh, not good enough. Uh, Matic will leave the club anyway in the summer. He's out of contract in the summer. Matic isn't one of our first choice midfielders, but despite that, he still seems to get his opportunities. He's the only predominant centre defensive midfielder Man United have got at the moment. Manchester United got Matic from Chelsea back in 2017, got him for 40 million. Matic has been at Man United now for over four years. Uh, uh, Jesse Lingard, we've got him, not good enough. Well, Jesse Lingard doesn't get in the team, does he? Like I said earlier on in the video, Lingard should have left Manchester United last month but Manchester United blocked his exit it was Newcastle and West Ham that were battling it out for Lingard last month they were trying to get him on loan don't forget the second half of last season Lingard enjoyed a four month loan spell with West Ham and he made an impact Lingard's been part of the club for a long time came up our academy and that is out of contract at Man United in the summer uh, Bruno Fernandes, he's a very, very good player. He's one of our best players and he's certainly one of the best signings we've made since Ferguson retired. He's been in form recently. You know, Fernandes played well against Burnley at Turf Moor. Uh, Varane's disallowed goal came from that set piece from Bruno Fernandes and I thought his passing was good and his vision was good in that game. He... Was unlucky not to score against Middlesbrough in the cup because he had chances. The best chance he had was when he hit the post. Uh, Fernandez also got an assist against Middlesbrough. Lovely ball to find Sancho. He played very well in the games against Brentford and Aston Villa away in the league. But, uh, you know, Fernandez has enjoyed a lot of poor games this season. I still thought he was far superior last season to how he has been so far this season. Earlier on the season, Fernandez rejected a contract offer from Man United. He said Bruno Fernandez contract talks are postponed until the summer, having turned down an offer last year. He said Fernandez was demanding similar money to the top earners at the club. Fernandez receives one hundred thousand pounds a week at the moment. He's under contract with Man United until twenty twenty five. There's an option of a further twelve months. He's been at the club for two years now. Uh, Man United got him from Sport in Lisbon back in January twenty twenty. Uh, Manchester United have also got Anthony Alanga. Um. Didn't start against Burnley, but he did come on. Um, Ilanga played in the cup game against Middlesbrough. Um, Ilanga missed the decisive penalty. And reflecting on that, Anthony Ilanga got racially abused on social media. I totally disagreed with that. Yeah, he may have cost us. But you know what? Ilanga's actually really impressed me since he broke into our first team squad. And I've mentioned so many times that he looks a very good asset for the first team squad. Um, he's been part of the club for a long time, Ilanga. You know, he came up our academy. He joined Man United's academy at the age of, what, 12? He's now, what, 19? So still very young. Towards the end of last year, he committed his future to the club because he signed a contract with Man United until June 2026. There's an option of a further year. Uh, Jaden Sancho, he's starting to really come good now. You know, Sancho was really good against Burnley at Turf Moor. You know, he got forward well, got into good positions, and every time he had the ball, he looked very dangerous. Sancho played very well in the cup game against Middlesbrough. He scored in that game, took his goal well. I think it got a slight deflection. It was his FA Cup debut when he was his first Old Trafford goal. There's other games Sancho's played well in, though. He played really well in the game against Burnley at Old Trafford in the final 
game of last year, but unfortunately was denied a goal in that one. He played very well in the games against Chelsea and Villarreal away, scored in them games. And I thought he played well in the first half against Crystal Palace last year. So yes, Sancho's starting to settle in, but he's still done nowhere near as well as a lot of Man United fans expected. You know, revert back to when we had Solskjaer, we couldn't get the best out of Sancho. Because obviously Solskjaer persistently played him out of position, and there was quite a few games Sancho didn't even play in under Ole. You know what I mean? What? Yeah, I'll have one. Make sure you don't have it fucking dripping all over here. Yeah, I'll have one. Yeah, I'll have one. Don't, don't put it there. Why? It might stain it. Alright, pass us that. But yeah, what I was saying about Sancho, yeah. Man United signed him last summer, didn't they? For £78 million, with add-ons included. Man United paid £73 million up front. Sancho's got a contract with the club until June 2026 as an option of a third year. And he did enjoy four good years with Borussia Dortmund before he signed for Man United. Obviously, uh, we've got Ronaldo, best player in the world overall. But he's not done that well in his last few games. I don't think he's scored in the like last five or is it six, something like that. Ronaldo didn't start against Burnley surprisingly, but he did come on in the game and was poor. I thought his finishing was very poor in the cup game against Middlesbrough. Like I've said, there's a good chance that Ronaldo will leave Man United in the summer. Well, it said earlier on this season he'll leave Man United in the summer if they fail to qualify for the Champions League. And it did say that Ronaldo faces a 25% pay cut should Man United fail to qualify for the Champions League. Was it around three weeks ago? Ronaldo gave an interview, didn't he? And he was very critical of the youngsters and he was demanding more from the youngsters and he was backing Rangit to do a good job. And Ronaldo said as well that I'm not a Man United to compete for 6th or 7th. He said finishing below 3rd is unacceptable. You know, we've got Juan Mata. Uh, don't have a great deal of perception on him. Doesn't get in the team. Mata lost his place in the team a while ago. Mata will leave in the summer. He's out of contract at Man United in the summer. Uh, we've got Marcus Rashford. To Rashford's credit, he's been in form recently. You know, Rashford did well at Turf Moor, uh, made some good runs in behind, got in some good positions. His decision making at times wasn't good, but and he had an early chance in that game. He was unlucky not to score. Uh, Rashford did well against Middlesbrough in the cup. You know, he had chances, had a goal disallowed, uh, scored the winner against West Ham before the international break. He came off the bench and scored against Brentford. That ended his three-month goal drought. But, yeah, it's good that he's back in form now because he has enjoyed a lot of poor games since he had the operation on his shoulder. Rashford missed the first two months of the season with that shoulder problem. And earlier on this season, he had a minor leg injury. And Manchester United have also got Cavani as well. Uh, Cavani is good. Um, weren't too good against Burnley recently, was anonymous in that game, apart from that chance he had, which produced a good save from the Burnley goalkeeper. Cavani's leaving Man United in the summer because earlier on this season, Rangnick revealed that Edison Cavani wants to stay at Man United till the end of the season. So there you go. More or less I've mentioned everybody. So in my next video, I'll be giving you my predicted 11 for Man United's game against Southampton. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel if you do. Consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very soon.